Hi, it's Amy. Welcome back. Well, I couldn't make you wait for part two, so here it is. We're going to do part two of your abuse cycle. All right. Um, in talking about your abuse cycle in the last video, we talked about the beginning of your abuse cycle, which we called your pre-assault cycle. As I said, in the pre-assault cycle, there are these precursors or warning signs that you may be headed in the wrong direction because you are thinking, acting, or feeling in an abnormal way about your life. Again, that does not mean that you are abnormal, just what is going on inside you is. So the pre-assault cycle segues into the assault cycle or the abuse cycle. Everyone who has committed a sexual crime has an abuse cycle because once again, nothing just happens. You need to get away with using that as an explanation for your actions. Now the abuse cycle or the assault cycle has several parts to it. They are the feelings that you have right before the crime. All right, that's one. The behaviors you exhibit right before the crime. The thoughts that accompany those feelings and those behaviors. And then the crime itself whether it's an assault, a molestation, a rape, or any other kind of abuse that you commit. And then there are the thoughts and the feelings and the behaviors that you have right after the crime. Those are all part of the cycle. So we are literally going to map this out for you as we get into more detailed material down the road. But let's look first at your feelings, okay? After the pre-assault cycle, the second component of the abuse cycle are your feelings. You may notice that you are dwelling on these feelings prior to committing a sexual crime. This is also true for other addictive behaviors, that you are dwelling on certain feelings. You might feel depressed or angry or rejected or isolated or inadequate or any other um, negative feelings about yourself. These negative feelings are vital for you to commit a sexual crime. Enthusiastic, optimistic people do not commit a sexual offense. So it's got to be that something's wrong, that you are having negative feelings. Now we need to look next at how your behavior fits into this assault cycle or abuse cycle. These behaviors, once you take a look at them, and once you examine them, become sort of a roadmap so that you can tell how close you are to an assault. When you are drowning in negative feelings, you usually behave in ways that are easily observed. Here is a list of some dangerous behaviors. Looking depressed, avoiding eye contact, become un becoming unusually quiet, pacing the floor and chewing your fingernails, your body becoming tense and rigid, becoming more secretive, grinning when you're extremely agitated or angry, covering up hurt or embarrassed feelings with laughter, your face becoming red and splotchy or clenching your fists, becoming sarcastic and argumentative, not answering when someone speaks to you, distorting information, spacing out or staring vacantly, becoming too passive or passive aggressive, isolating yourself and avoiding others using drugs or alcohol, looking at porn, intimidating others, increasing use of profanity, increased stuttering, becoming sneaky and lying, Okay, so the last component of your assault cycle or your abuse cycle are your thoughts. These thoughts keep the cycle going. Anyone who commits a sexual offense has a thought process or cognitions that are part of this cycle. 
Many of the thoughts in your pre-assault cycle are what we call errors in thinking. And we will get to those when we discuss cognitive restructuring. But here are some thoughts that may go through your mind when you are in your assault cycle. You may tell yourself, I deserve sex. The more sex I get, the better I feel. I need sex as often as I want. I feel inadequate to cope with my life. I feel insecure. I want to get revenge. People are purposely out to insult me. My friends are rejecting me. I shouldn't even try. I'll fail anyway. At least I can enjoy my sexual fantasies. Women will never like me. Why is this happening to me? I'm never wrong. Everyone else is better than I am. If I play it right, I can get away with it. I won't get caught. I'm unlovable. I'm stupid. I'm a failure. I deserve to feel sorry for myself. People are no good. If it doesn't go my way, it's wrong. I'm the best. They are all idiots. If I'm a sex offender, why not enjoy it? My victims really liked what I did to them. Now let's talk about the crime. The crime is the abusive behavior that you commit. For example, it might go something like this. If you are a rapist, a description of your crime right, might read, I raped adult women aged 19 to 35. I break into their houses late at night while they're sleeping and steal a knife from the kitchen. I go to their bedroom and place my hand over their mouth as I wake them up. I use the knife and threaten to harm them if they don't cooperate. I force them to perform oral sex on me, and then I force them to engage in anal intercourse. If you molest children, an example of your crime might read, I sexually molest children between the age of seven and 11 years old. I usually meet a lone boy in the park. I lure him into the woods, telling him I know where there's a tree house. Once alone, I trick him into letting me suck his penis. I also have him masturbate me until I come. When we're through, I give him $2 so that he won't tell anyone. These are some elements that we've gone over today of the pre-assault cycle. Your thoughts, your feelings, your behaviors, but how do they all fit together? Each step leads to another. The pre-assault cycle, all those steps lead into the assault cycle or the abuse cycle. Everyone has their own unique cycle. And until we discuss this in more detail, I'm going to give you an assignment to explore your cycle. Using the parts of the pre-assault and the assault cycle that we talked about, make up a pre-assault cycle and sexual assault cycle for yourself. Include the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that you exhibit. In a well-done cycle, there will be many steps. I would say at the very least, there will be seven steps. As you put this cycle together, and as we discuss it in the future, you will see how many opportunities all along the way that you had to stop this behavior. You will see how many opportunities you really had to stop the sexual assault before you committed it. Next time, we're going to talk about childhood abuse, and this is in regard to what you may have experienced as a child. Until then, I want to ask you to please subscribe to this channel, 
Please feel free to communicate by leaving questions or comments here on Twitter or on Facebook. And again, if you even want to leave me a private message through Facebook, that's fine. I will answer you. And if any of these videos, if you see them and you think that any of this information may help someone who you know, please share the video with them. Okay? All right. Until next time, be well.